All right. All right. Uh, Sorry yeah. about that. After some technical difficulties, we are now back. I don't know, no trades. My husband, the virtual Wilson from Home Improvement, has decided to show his face on the channel and hang out with us during this live stream. Thank you so much, Adam, for being here. Uh -huh. Thank you all for taking time out of your Saturday to be here. Sorry about the technical difficulties we just had on our last live. But I also want to say a huge thank you to Easywood Tools for hosting this uh, maker fair so that we can be here and carve a spoon and talk. Adam's going to answer your questions, and uh, if you have any questions specifically for him, he can do that. Otherwise, he'll read your questions to me so that I can carve and answer at the same time. Sounds good. I did tell a little white lie saying that I was going to carve a spoon today. I'm actually going to carve a butter paddle, and that's because, A, it's an easier project to uh, do and talk at the same time. It's also a shorter project, so we might actually have a chance of finishing. This is what a finished butter paddle actually looks like. Um, and the other great thing about this project is that it uses one $22 knife that you can get on Amazon. I'll just share a link for this knife if you are interested in it. Do, 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 do. Here's the knife that I'm using. And the other thing I like about this is this is free wood. Um, you can get free wood all over the place. I'll talk a little bit more about spoon, spoon carving processes, processes, process, uh, as we go along. But let's just uh, have, you know, have a conversation. People are asking about, have we been to Dollywood since no. we've been to Tennessee? I want to though. We really want to. The really unfortunate thing about the timing of our move is that right after we moved here, there was a horrible tornado and then was directly followed by a pandemic. And now we've been at home for like 85 days now or something like that. Um, definitely so, okay. on the list though. Definitely on the list. We have, to, we have a lot of Tennessee living to do when the world opens back up. Need a butter paddle? Daniel Wax is here to uh, troll, I see. He's been using both of his hands as butter paddles for years. That's a great method. I um, Actually, when I was a kid, my parents had to lock away the butter because I was obsessed with eating butter. Um, and so I would just you know, eat an entire stick in one sitting, and they had to hide it from me. So anyway, here we are today. Somebody asked, Matt? Does the grain direction matter? Yes. So another huge reason that I love spoon carving in general is because you can, in one little project that you can do, again, with one tool and free wood, learn so many of the very important tasks of woodworking all at once. You get to learn about grain direction. You, have, you get to learn how to sharpen your tools because carving with dull tools is absolutely absolutely miserable um you get to learn how wood works you get to learn tool safety um you get to learn you know how to design in three dimensions there are so many things that you can learn during spoon carving and that's actually why i often um like when people are interested in getting into woodworking in general they i i ask them to take a spoon carving class or to at least carve a few spoons before they start building furniture because so many things about grain structure and strength and other things that you have to learn eventually anyway can get learned in a really tactile, easy, hands-on project. Yep. Somebody asked, did my job, job transfer cause the move to Tennessee? Uh, well. Yes and no. Kind of. It was self, it was, uh, it was by choice. The wonderful magic of the internet allows uh, virtual work, which, you know, has been very fortuitous in this environment. Um, so, yes, but we very uh, deliberately chose Tennessee uh, intentionally. Yes. Tell us about Taiwan. Why did you go? Why did you leave? I don't feel like you go into it much. That's probably because it doesn't really have a whole lot to do with my daily topics of conversation, a.k.a. farming and woodwork. But um, Taiwan is amazing. Um, my parents were missionaries my entire life. They still are. Um, so I spent a lot of my young life abroad in Eastern Europe, Asia, um, lots of other places. And when um, I was 13, 
I was part of a little dance troupe and we went to Taiwan and I absolutely loved it there. And I never wanted to uh, come back to the States, but of course I was 13. So I had to for a little while. But then when I got to uh, university age, I went to Beijing University for a study abroad program and absolutely loved it and wanted to do some graduate work in Taiwan or like in Asia in general. And I found a really awesome seminary program that is through my parents' ministry in Taiwan. So that's what I was doing there. Then after I graduated, I came back to Seattle to visit my best friend, who is now my husband. And, you know, the rest is history. So because I always kind of thought I would live in Asia long term, I learned to speak Chinese um, and read and write it. And I absolutely love Asian culture. Um, and, you know, if we were presented with an opportunity to move back to Asia, I would absolutely jump on it in a heartbeat. But I always said that if I was going to live in the States, then I would have to live on a farm. And so my city boy husband here uh, got, gets now the privilege of experiencing farm life because that was what it took to uh, convince me to stay. Um, okay. This is an interesting one. What was sort of the best, worst to use for carving food utensils? Um, well, that's kind of a, I mean, it's, it's kind of a loaded question because you can really use any kind of wood for um, spoon carving and, and, and food utensils in general. I would stay away from exotics um, because A, they're a nightmare to carve. They're not super easy to sustainably source. And also some of them have really toxic oils and chemicals in them. Um, but I mean, for everyday spoons, the real ticket, if you're going to use any old wood, is to get what's called green wood. So it's freshly cut wood from a tree. Um, as it starts to dry out, especially harder species like oak and ash and things like that, they get like really, really hard to carve. They also get a little bit more chippy and stuff. But when you, if you have a fairly freshly cut piece of wood, it carves like a dream. So oftentimes when I find a, a source of, of some good wood, like I really love carving fruit wood. That's a really enjoyable thing to carve. When I find a good source, I'll actually um, cut out a whole bunch of spoon blanks all at once. Then I'll put them in the freezer. So actually this is like ice cold right now because I just pulled it out of the freezer, but putting it in the freezer keeps the moisture in it. And so it basically extends the, the, the time that you have available to carve it. So if you, don't, if you can't carve it all, all at once, it's a great way to store it and to have an enjoyable carving experience later. But yeah, this, this is what I'm carving right now is cherry and cherry is really enjoyable to carve, um, wet or dry, but everything is better wet. Hey, Diane, Audrey, Norris, there, say hi. Oh, hey guys. Oh, my aunt and my cousins are on. That's awesome. What's up? Um, let's see. How's the new puppy? Um, well, the new puppy is great. They are not house dogs. They are um, like farm dogs. So they stay outside all the time. But um, June and Johnny, her older brother slash cousin or whatever, are just absolutely amazing. They're so, um, the breed, they're Colorado mountain dogs. The breed is really, really cool. They are just absolutely precious creatures. I love them a lot. They have caused a little bit of mischief, but that's to be expected. Oh, here's a good one. Um, any new guild projects in your future? Um, put the pressure on Mark. I would love to do more guild projects. Um, but because of the way that that's structured, I don't know if um, if like it's really if the if guild projects will be as much um, a regular occurrence. However, um, I am currently working on developing a similar guild-like experience. For those of you who don't know, it's just um, Mark Spagnolo, the Wood Whisperer, has an online um, learning program that he does for woodworking specifically. I am working on, um, with my business partner, Josh, right now, developing a online learning platform for all kinds of things, not just um, woodworking, homesteading skills, regenerative farming, um, blacksmithing, welding and fabrication, and we're going to have guest teachers and it's going to be awesome when it actually gets developed but as a shameless self-plug for right now on my patreon account we are actually doing a test run of some of those projects so we're if you are a patron at a 15 dollar a month level 
then you'll get access to all of my long form educational content. So when we're doing an educational or a how to or instructional video on YouTube right now, we are recording a long form version of that, um, that that has a lot more of the actual in-depth information. So if you actually want to tackle that specific project, that's a great way to do it. So if you want to be a guinea pig, go on over to my Patreon. You can um, join at any level and get all kinds of benefits. But at the 15 and up level, you get access to all those longer videos. One of those that's coming up that I'm really excited about is an hour long tutorial on my chicken coop build that I recently did. If you haven't seen it already, it's on Instagram. It's a miniature version of our barn. And that is a really, really fun build. And the video is jam packed with really helpful framing and um, other cool tricks. So <clears throat> shameless plug, go on over to Patreon. Yeah, I'll take a few. Yeah. Let's see here. So Adam, other than guitar, what instruments do you play? Um, well, competently, uh, I'd probably say guitar, piano and then it and then like bass and then probably drums and then after that there's a huge drop off in quality um other question i know circumstances haven't been exactly normal since moving to tennessee but what's something you, you don't like about tennessee as compared to seattle not counting missing your old home that's a good question without offending people uh, I don't <laughs> know how we had, um well actually i i i I do think uh, like Thai restaurants, um, hey, yeah, Asian restaurants, like in Seattle, they, they really got that figured out. Um, so we, I'm, I know that there's some here. We just haven't found them yet. So yeah, there's <laughs> less. Well, I mean, like, 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 just logically speaking, there are way less Asians here. Yeah. So there's less. Like, I mean, in Seattle, I mean, it's like forty percent Asian where we came from, and so we really do miss good Asian food. And also because like all restaurants are shut down and everything, we don't have that option yeah. to really go and explore anyway. That's without very, offending people. Without offending people, um, <laughs> I am not actually Irish. Good question, though. Um, Mentioned getting into beekeeping. Have you made any progress with that, Annie? Um, <laughs> well, I have a bunch of swarm traps set right now um, to catch some wild honeybees, but I figured that like with everything else infrastructure wise that I was trying to get set up on the farm this year, it didn't make a whole lot of sense for me to actually invest physical money in buying bees. But if I catch some, then heck yeah, it's on like Donkey Kong. I also like not to give a public call out or anything, but Craig the Barefoot Forge, who you've seen before on my channel, um, is talking about bringing one of the like, I don't know, 23 swarms that he's caught up in Pittsburgh down here. So we, he might bring me some bees on a road trip later this uh, summer. We'll see. Um, let's see. Somebody asked why we uh, chose Tennessee. Have you have you uh, talked about that? I mean, I think peripherally. I mean, like the quick and easy answer is that a we had a great community already down here. I've been coming down here regularly for um, the last five years for work, um, and I absolutely loved it here. I love the weather here. Um, this like like the area that we settled yeah. in is like a fantastic area to farm. There's a lot more opportunities. Like the farming community is a lot. Um, more readily available to us here than there. Land was um, significantly cheaper. So to be able to get out, like to get out of Seattle and to, to be able to afford to buy more property here was definitely a big, big draw because there's no way we could have purchased the amount of land that we have here um, in Seattle. Leonardo da Vinci was left-handed. Do you think that by being left-handed, you are smarter? Um, <laughs> well, my mom always taught me that humility was very important, but then she also uh, was constantly encouraging my, me my entire life and gave me a very large head. So uh, I have always been told that left-handed people are smarter, but actually I'm ambidextrous. So um, there is that. Somebody said your animal traits, where's your Asian cooking skills? I think you just got called up. Uh, I have Asian cooking skills. Excuse me, stand up for me. <laughs> Adam enjoys the fruit of my labor, literally and figuratively, each and every day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Could I get an amen? Amen, sure. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Okay, and I've been building my shop for the past two years. I'm at the stage where it's a complete workshop. I would love to make this a full-time job, but I'm hesitant to quit my job just yet. Any advice? Um, there's a lot there. Um, I actually, when I was building furniture, um, like, and, and that was where I wanted to go, um, basically only building furniture full time. Um, five years ago, I think I quit my job and decided to start building furniture, um, full time. And for me personally, that was a huge mistake because, um, when you start any business, like all of a sudden the thing that the, the catalyst that, that started that business gets lost in all of the businessy things about it. So um, for me, building furniture full-time was not the way to go. Um, one book that I'll highly recommend, even if you do want to do it, is called The E-Myth. It, I didn't read that book for the longest time because I thought it was actually about emails and I was like, I'm not interested. But it's actually, it's the entrepreneurial myth. So check out that book. It's really fantastic. Um, I think it gives a really realistic picture of what you need to think about before starting a, a business and like the reason that i that i would like i'm always 100 percent for everyone um following their dreams and and doing the things that they want to do with their time and with their lives but there is a very very real and practical truth that um turning your hobbies into your livelihood turns your the thing that you love into a job and i've seen that go wrong for so many people including myself that uh just, just be really, um, I would definitely say just be really, really intentional about how you go about it. Have a really good business plan. Um, you know, get, get a, accountability for how you spend your time when you, um, when you are self-employed, things like that. Yeah. Adam, Adam's actually knows a ton about business too. Do you have anything to add? Uh, no, it's just a good book. I actually read that book like 10 years ago um, as well. It's just like full of a lot of wisdom. I highly recommend it for anybody who's uh into doing entrepreneurship. Um, Christopher's asked this a few times. Uh, Adam and Annie, how old is everyone? I'm not sure I know what that question. Are you asking about us or are you asking about the animals? Well, Adam and I are... I'm 35. 35 and 31? 32? It's 2020. That doesn't help me. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm 31 or 32. I think I'm 31. I'm pretty sure I'm 31. I think you're 31. Okay. Anyway, so that's that. And then the animals are, um, I don't think we have any animals that are older than five. So every five and down. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Hello from Ireland. Hey, that's wild. Hello from Sweden. That's cool. I absolutely love how international the maker community is. And Greece too. That's wild. Australia, that's, that's awesome. Uh, e Myth Revisited, I, that's the one I read, yeah. 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 Uh, Richard I think, Gerber, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think it's like basically the Rutvise version, but that's the one that you'll see. Um, let's see. Any insights into the actual spoon carving challenges slash process? I've seen that question yeah. a few times. Okay, well, let's actually just take a few minutes and talk about spoon carving because that's um, kind of what we're here to do. It is the title of the video. It is the title of the video. So, uh, yes, let's talk about um, first where to find wood. Uh, that's a question that I get asked all the time. Uh, and the easiest answer is to Google all of your local arborist companies and start giving them a call and asking them, Hey, if you ever have a cherry tree or whatever, come down. Can I come and get a branch? A lot of arborist companies will actually be super thankful to have people come and pick up the wood because they have to actually pay to dispose of it. So definitely call your local arborists um, for free wood. And th that will also give you a, a constant steady store source for green wood. Um, the other question I get asked all the time is uh, what tools do you years use? Um, I forged my own hatchet. That, that's the one that I use the most on it. But Gransford Brooks makes a good one. Um, Robin Wood makes a good one. Robin Wood also makes a fantastic hook knife. Um, the hook knife that I use the most is one by Reed Swartz. He makes a left-handed one that's really easy to sharpen. I made a video about that for my Instagram recently. You can also find a sharpening video. Actually, speaking of which, people always ask about sharpening too. So you can ask. You can find a sharpening video 
about sharpening spoon carving tools in my YouTube uh, archives as well. Let's talk about um, the three, oh, not the three, but let's talk about like different hand positions when it comes to carving. So carving is um, you always wanna you know not cut yourself. You wanna be um, safe and you wanna be efficient. Um, so generally speaking, we always are trying to get the longest cut possible because these long lines are going to um, give us a nice, you know, refined, clean looking um, finished product. So that's one thing that we're always aiming for. And let's just talk about different hand positions really quick. So uh, here's the actually first things first, how do we hold it? Um, my friend Josh Nava actually has a fantastic book. It's called How to Whittle. Let me just actually give you a link to it. Do, 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 do. Here's the How to Whittle book. Um, it's a fantastic resource, but um, in it, he talks about um, how you hold a knife. He says that it's basically as if you were grabbing a doorknob or holding a key. So if you think about those two things, you have a nice relaxed um, grip or, um, you know, you're, you're not, you're not just like crushing the thing. So think about it, grabbing it like a doorknob. And then we have um, several different cuts. First things first is the power cut. So I need to stand back. No, yeah. no, no, you're fine. Oh, yeah. Well, me think he's fine. I'm just kidding. No, okay. So the power cut, um, we have a straight arm here. We have our, our hand that's holding the, the item that we're cutting. We are thinking about grain direction and I can talk a little bit more about that in a second. But with this, I've got this here and I'm making sure that um, you know my body is always out of the way of the knife, that my fingers are always out of the way of the knife. But um, we take it here, we have a straight arm here and we've got this one holding onto it. And then we can actually just use are like you get a ton of power here and this allows you to take big chunks at a time um so this is something that's going to help you really speed up but it also doesn't offer a ton of control so this is a great cut like i said for um you know removing a lot of material really quickly but not for refining it the next cut that i really like that'll give you a lot of power is called a chest lever cut and that is literally using your ladder, your lats muscles to your lat muscles to give you power. And again, you're safe here because you are, um, you know, pulling away, like the knife is going nowhere towards you. But you can again get a ton of power um, <coughs> and a nice safe cut. But once again, very little control there. One of my personal favorites, because I get a whole lot of being a female young woodworker, get tons of safety police on everything. So I really love showing this cut. It's called the pull cut um, because you're cutting towards yourself, something that grandpa always said not to do. But with this, um, I'm using, I'm cutting at the base of the knife. I'm using this hand if I need a little bit of extra pressure and I'm cutting Towards myself, I'm being very careful that I'm not cutting down like this because that will, like, as long as the, the knife is engaged with the wood, you know, you're safe. But if it slips, then obviously you're less safe. Um, but with this, I'm just pulling towards myself like this. I've got that, that key grip on the knife for this one. Um, I can flip the knife all kinds of different ways and do this. And again, um, I have a second fail safe here too with the way that my arm is placed because um, the knife, my hand can't slip any further back because I've got my elbow locked here. So I can cut towards myself with plenty of power and tons of control without being in danger. Another one that I really like is called the thumb lever cut. And that's this, I'm using this thumb as a lever to push the back of the knife. So it's basically like this. And with this one, the thing you wanna be most careful of is watching where the meat of this finger is. You don't want to uh, get that with the tip of the knife. But again, if you're paying attention to where you're at, then this is a great one. This is uh, also known as the scissor grip cut. This one can be really effective um, in removing a whole bunch of chips, um, but in a very controlled manner. This little, the neck of the spoon here is always where it is the most challenging to get a nice clean cut. 
Um, and then the only other really one that I use a lot is called the scoop cut. And you're kind of going like this with this. And if you've ever peeled an apple or a potato, that's what you're doing here. And so we uh, want to be really careful that the, once again, that the wood is keeping our, um, our thumb safe and that our other hand is out of the way. Um, but with this here, um, if I'm, if I am cutting towards, towards my thumb, I want to be really careful that I'm actually scooping so that the knife is rotating away from where my thumb is here. So, um, this is really helpful for, um, doing like the ends of things, trying to get little end details and making things look really nice. So nice. hit me with any other questions that you have and we'll just keep on chatting. Nice. A lot of people saying hi from all over the world, Australia, Texas, Connecticut, Louisiana, Germany. Pretty cool. That's amazing. Um, this is an interesting question. Uh, we'll do it. Hello from the UK. Annie, do you ever, do you ever struggle with the duality of having a physically tiring job while trying to sustain an online presence and the mental strain that comes with it. Yeah, absolutely. That's probably one of the biggest things that I deal with because, uh, yeah, I mean, one thing that you really need to have an online personality uh, is, or to have a successful one is to have like a very big personality and to have a lot of energy. And I mean, one thing that I talked about on my last live quite a bit is my struggle with anxiety and depression. And um, that stuff really gets in the way of like showing up on camera and be like, hi, I'm Animal Trace. Not that that, I mean, that is very much who I am when I'm healthy and when I'm, you know, not exhausted, but it, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of, a lot of that there. Nice. Adam, where did you, where are you originally from and where did you grow up? Tell your true origin story. This is interesting. Well, so I was actually born in Hawaii. Uh, as you can tell. As you can tell. Um, and we moved to Washington, Seattle area when I was about five years old. Um, so I remember enough of Hawaii to know that I wish we didn't move. But enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I grew up there um, and then was more or less in that area until just recently when we moved. To Tennessee. To Tennessee, yeah. Um do you do you guys look after piggies and cows? Not yet. We we so we have, Excuse you. We, have, we one. have a pig and two cows and we're getting more. Yeah, but not on the farm. Yes. So no. we have um I have a dairy cow, her name's right Reba McIntyre. So if you want to see her, I've got a couple of videos with her on her, on my channel and you can check those out. Um and then her bull calf fancy. And we're actually getting go, getting into beef cattle um at the end of the summer. So our beef cattle will be arriving here and we actually are looking at using pigs to fix our pond. So our little Lucy girl, our uh, pet pig that we inherited from one of our neighbors, uh, will finally get a job working on fixing the pond. So, David, and then we'll also raise bacon as well. So David asks, can, yeah, Annie, can you give a link for a left-handed hook knife, please? I can't find one anywhere, thank you. Is that a thing? Um, I would have to go find one, but actually, uh, check out Reed Schwartz, the guy that I mentioned earlier, he makes left-handed hook knives. Um, you can find him on, uh, Instagram and I'm sure, yeah, he makes good ones. I oh, Jason, uh, Jason Lonin, Toolmaker. Um, I think it's L-O-N-N-O-N. -N -N. Um, he's on Instagram too. He makes, um, hook knives. They're awesome. Um, I'm trying to think about, oh, I, I actually Robin Wood. Um, Lee Nelson Toolworks carries Robinwood tools and Robinwood makes left hand knives as well. Can you use milk paint for wooden utensils? Oh, absolutely. In fact, doo -doo -doo -doo. Ah. it's safe. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, mean, I, I probably wouldn't put it on the eating portion, but yeah. you can like decorate the rest of the screen. How many times? Per day, on average, does Adam have to ask, do I need to stand back? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, somebody asked me to play a duet. We, should, we could do that. Maybe not. Yeah, we could. In a bit here. Yeah. Um, no practice, though. So you're getting, Yeah, zero you, practice on the spot. Just know, Just keep your expectations low. Uh, maybe medium. Maybe not low. I'd say keeping low expectations in life gives you the opportunity to be constantly pleasantly surprised. Yeah. What? Finish to use for the wooden utensils? Um, great question. I like it. I mean, 
So good night. <laughs> I use walnut oil usually because it hardens um, and it just produces like provides a nice thing, but it, um, people who are allergic to nuts sometimes have issues with the with nut oils. So another option and one that doesn't um, actually like you know color your spoon at all is mineral oil. A lot of people don't like using mineral oil though because you know the way that it's processed and all that stuff. So another good option is beeswax. Or I actually do have um, I like I have a, a butcher block conditioner that I use sometimes, and there's that. I mean, it says, you know, it'd be cool to put a map and pin board up, see uh, up in your shop and every week pin where yours are from. I think you can see all that on. Oh, yeah, we can do that on, on YouTube. Yeah, and it's absolutely, like everywhere. Absolutely. That would be it's amazing. That would be awesome. Um, that's a fantastic idea. Yeah. I love maps in general. I mean, just. Adam, are you out of high school? I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> um, let's see. Actually, Adam is an old man compared to me. When we met, when I was 15 years old, our age disparity was a lot creepier than it is now. Thanks for answering my question. I, I think Annie's band's woodwork is incredibly inspiring. Inspiring. I'm a female engineer with aspirations at woodworking in home setting. That's cool. Oh, heck yeah. Good on you. Uh, this is interesting. Have you come uh, come across any tricky things with gardening in the South as compared to the Northwest? That's from Haley. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, like, like the biggest cop out answer ever was that it was like such a huge challenge to try to put my garden in without like having my own tractor and stuff because I we sold the tractor in Seattle so we could pay for the move, and um, so like. Well, is me. The soil here is like there's a lot more rocks and a lot more clay. Yeah. Um. So it was a big challenge getting the garden in, but now that it's in, um, honestly, there like I miss my Seattle soil because I had spent five years working with it. But knowing what I learned while I was in Seattle, I, it should only take me like another year or two to get our soil here to the, to where where it needs to be. To, to be actually a whole lot more successful. So like the things that I love growing, okra, hot peppers, watermelon, all those things are way easier to grow here than they were in Seattle. Yeah. And O2, so Spokane, Washington here. Oh. That's where actually we met. We met in Spokane. Let's see. Tell us about your project board in the background, please. Yes, so, um, Another fantastic book recommendation is called Scrum, Doing Twice the Work in Half the Time. Uh, I have a lot going on uh, between the farm, my business, and, you know, everything else. And so my friend Josh Nava introduced me to Scrum, and he, like, kind of taught me how to use it. And it has been absolutely hugely uh, effective in getting tasks organized and also breaking tasks up into manageable bite-sized pieces so that they can actually get tackled. So like, for example, um, you know, if I'm carving a spoon, which like, that's not usually something I'd make a, a series for, but I would say, you know, I would make a note for, uh, go get the wood, sharpen my tools, collect my tools, like, um, have my spoon design ready so that when I actually go to, physically carve the spoon, every, like all the barriers to entry, all of the things that would get in the way of me actually being able to do that have been removed so that it's just, okay, now I can carve a spoon. Um, again, that's a very granular way of looking at it, but I mean, we have it like set up for our business, for our video production, um, for everything, just to make sure that, you know, uh, that things don't get lost because it's very easy, especially the way my mind works for things to just disappear and never be seen again. Nice. Let's see. How can a pig fix a pond? Asked Tim Taylor. Oh, this is fascinating. Um, this is something I learned upon arriving in Tennessee, but uh, it's a common practice here to dig out a pond and then to put benzoic clay in the bottom and then put a bunch of hogs on it so that they basically stomp the clay into the ground and create a watertight surface. So... That's how a pig can fix a pond. Very nice. A um, few people asked, 
this one. Silver Agnes asks, uh, though no trades, does Adam play any role in managing the many, many projects that seem to be going on across the farm? I would say short answer, not much. Um, it's almost all Annie. Actually, it's basically completely Annie. Adam is in has been very focused on building his career and supporting his family. And he's done an absolutely fantastic job with all of that. Yeah. That follows up to another question. Somebody asked, what do you do for work? So I work, I'm a program manager for a, a large tech company. Um, and so my day is, is basically completely filled um, with we're doing that. Um, I work virtually from the house, um, but I don't, which is nice. I used to, used to have to commute into work from Seattle, which was about an hour commute each way, at least. Yeah. Um, so that's a major life win for me. Um, let's see. Somebody thinks I look like a can't. I, I look, look like I'm only twenty five. Thank you again. <laughs> uh, Coming from the upper Northwest, do you have any problems suggesting the climate now that it's getting warmer? I know. I, I, uh, I love it. We I'm love from, it. Um, that's the Hawaii. Everyone, well, and it's the Taiwan for me. Everyone always says like, oh, like, you know, good luck as if it's like so miserable here. But like, I mean, heat and humidity is our, like, is what we like the most. I mean, um, I also have a circulation disorder. So if you watched any of my videos in Seattle, I had to wear a very like thick sweatshirt and outfit like all the time because my body doesn't function in the like properly in the cold. And so I am so happy to be here where like my body works and the sun shines. What a novel thing. Yeah, it's great. I I like the the warm summer nights in the south. You, you just don't have that uh, up in the Pacific Northwest. Usually by the time the sun goes down, it's the temperature drops pretty quick. Oh, also the lightning bugs are really cool. That's we had, cool. we didn't have those in Seattle. Absolutely. Uh, also the frogs, the peepers in the spring were a really interesting uh, introduction. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. How long have you been married? 55 years for me, says coin. You dig it. It feels like 55. Yeah. Less than 55. I can tell you that. Um, no, we've been married um, eight. eight years. Thanks for all the scrum info. Tell Annie, this is the Southwest Oklahoma Volunteer Roadside Assistance Teams for your move to your Tennessee. Cool. Oh, heck yeah. No children. Ask. Coin you dig ask. We have children. We do not but we have lots of kids. Don't miss all the rain though. Definitely don't miss the rain. We do not miss the rain. Also like one other, like just gardening thing. It is really funny. People are like, oh, like, you know, I, I had a, I just released a video about like how not to water your garden. And everyone's like, oh yeah, that would have worked great in Seattle. It works great in Tennessee too. So just saying, it doesn't rain as often here, but uh, it's still possible to have a really successful non artificially watered garden yeah it's yeah it, it's very green here which I, I do appreciate it's like jurassic park let's see hi from central valley california when will you start carving adam asked brandon uh you don't want to see that um <laughs> It's, you're just not going to learn anything. Let's see. I mean, I will definitely, I'll add to whoever I was asking about, like, uh, Adam's involvement around here and stuff. Like, the thing is, like, Adam has been incredibly, incredibly gracious in accommodating my desire to do things that he has absolutely no desire to do or to be a part of. Um, and there's like a lot to be said for that, for sure. Um, you know, he, oh, thank you. yeah, he's, he's done great in that regard. How to put on band-aids asked Dustin Helm. Uh, that's probably what my spoon carving tutorial would end up 
devolving into. <laughs> If if it if it's like Jurassic Park, what dinosaur would you want to keep around? S S Matt S. Well, did you know that ch chickens are the closest living relative to dinosaurs and have very very similar behavior tactics? So, I mean, we kind of already do have chickens. I mean, we well, we do have chickens. We kind of already do have dinosaurs. Wait till we get Adam wants to get some peacocks. Uh, to like reminisce about living in Hawaii. Uh, so, and also because they're really good at eating ticks. And so if I can find some peacocks, uh, that will be probably as close to dinosaurs as we can get. But what's your favorite dinosaur though? Uh, well, I was a huge Jurassic Park fan growing up and I always loved the T-Rex uh, scene from that. So probably the T-Rex. That scene didn't scare you? That like oh, yeah, terrified me. Oh yeah, scared the living daylights out of me when I was eight years old. Um, let's see. How, oh, this is a good one. JC asks, how much do you miss your pizza oven? Oh, I have the best news for you. I have a new pizza oven. It just got here in the mail. So as soon as I can, um, build a, uh, a, like stand for it, then we're back in business, baby. Woo! Um, Christopher asks, guys, will this video chat be on YouTube yes. so we can see it later? Oh, okay, yeah, cool. We're just we're gonna have to delete that first one. That was a bit. Yeah, that was awful. Uh, Pole Barn Productions says guinea guinea hens are good for ticks, also. Oh yeah. Well, there's a bit of <laughs> a also, problem there. Yeah, really Adam hates. Out guinea hens because I had a guinea hen that like actually had specifically targeted him in a very uh, angry way as, as uh, in Seattle. And so he hates the species, but I think that we need to have him here. I'm a hundred percent for it. We have a lot of ticks. Hey, Adam, we actually are going to need to wrap up. It's 1153. We're going to cut off in just a few minutes. So actually, if you want to hear us play a song, um, here's my, but better paddle. It's not fully done, but it's pretty close, so no problem there. Um, but if we want to play a song, we should do that. Um, do it right now? Yeah. All right. And also, let's just see here. Um, Are you going to play along with me? Of course. Okay. With my knife. Just uh -huh. kidding. Um, okay, wait. So I do want to say, once again, thank you so much to Easywood Tools for having us on um, as part of their Maker Fair. That's really awesome. Make sure that you check out Jamie Page. He's next, um, JP Woodworks. So if you head on over to his page, he has a live um, shameless self-plug. I also did just release a um, new video on my channel as well. Uh, it's to teach you how to diagnose problems in your garden and hopefully fix things in an organic way to deal with pests and um, disease, watering issues. I will get my handle in. What are we playing? I don't know. Sand? Okay. Okay. All right. All right, no practice, no rehearsal. No practice, no long time. nervousness. All right, ready? I don't know, it might. Okay. All right, one.
close up. <laughs> I mean, well, actually, that happened so quickly that we still have like four minutes. Oh, we do. Well, we started at like eight minutes after the hours, yeah. Oh, uh, well, I know, but we don't want to like keep them from going over to Jake's pages. Uh, JP would work this next. Gotcha. Uh, singing? Singing? Do you want to sing? Uh, I... Um... No, I think she doesn't want to sing. I think I did, I guess. We don't have to sing. Oh, well, well I, 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 uh, I can pull it up. Putting her on the spot, guys. Yeah. Un... Unwarmed, too. Well... When was the last time we played this song in reality? Like six months ago or something? I don't know. Well, I mean, like, wait, wait, wait. Let me just, like, look. Let me look at some, something else. Uh, uh, um, all right. I mean, I guess we could. Do you want to try it? It might be easier if you put that away. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I'll just like keep just that hold that. <laughs> yeah, Wait, which just version play. are you playing? In C. Oh, okay. okay I would okay. just not play. I think it's going to mess you up. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's just sing. You're right. Thank you so much for being here, my friends. Go check out JP Woodworks. Cheers, guys.